For over 20 years, I've dedicated my life to bringing you the very best selling, marketing, and business building strategies to keep your business thriving. Get ready to experience the success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tom Ferry Show, episode 73. You asked for it, we're delivering. If you have the desire to book way more appointments, the next three shows, I'm gonna give you the best of the early stages of my telephone experience and what I've been working with all of our consultants, all of our clients, my 70 salespeople every single day to be able to book appointments like this every single day. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. What's the problem? What's the problem? that I'm seeing right now. The market's been good, it's after the 4th of July weekend, we got six more months left to go, and there is an enormous opportunity for those of us that are in massive action, but the problem that I see is right here. We're not focused enough on the cause, we're focused too much on the effect, meaning we're spending way too much time saying, I wanna make more money, I wanna do more transactions, You know, I need more listings, instead of saying, how do I get more appointments? How do I get more appointments? If you just stopped right now and you wrote down the question, knowing what I know now, how do I 4X, 10X the number of appointments I book? What's gonna happen is your mind's gonna get super clear like, I'm gonna need to make more phone calls, I'm gonna have to follow up more, and that's a beautiful thing. The moment you realize that by talking too much about the effect, I want more listings, I want more sales, I want more money, I want more happiness, and I love all that. The challenge is you're not gonna get enough of it unless you focus on the cause, right? What has to happen first in order for you to get all those things, and you and I both know the answer, it's what the next three shows are about, becoming an appointment setting machine. So I wanna remind you, you've seen me talk about this before. I say the human mind can only have one dominant focus at a time. So you wake up in the morning, you get to the office and it's go time. Where is your mindset? What are you focusing on? We know that a lot of people it's drama, distractions or just no focus. They just show up and whatever's happening is happening. We know a big percentage of people, they're spending their time kind of getting organized. You know, I got to move the paper from here to here and I got to make sure that everything's in the right place and oh, it's got to go to lunch, right? And, and I get it, like organization, we feel like we need to get more organized, but I know plenty of people that sell a lot of homes, help a lot of customers and make a fortune that aren't that organized. Now, there's a big group of people that are under the impression that we need to make more contacts. So, so here's the challenge, ready? The human mind gets whatever you focus on. So if you start saying to yourself, you know, I really want that beautiful black new Tesla, what do you begin to see everywhere? We know the reticular activating system, whatever you think about the most, is what you attract in. So if you say, man, I gotta make 15 contacts a day or I gotta talk to 20 people a day, what you end up with is a bunch of chicken scratches on a piece of paper, but then I say, well, how many leads did you generate? How many appointments did you book? Oh, I, you know, I didn't, I, didn't, you know, I didn't get a lot of bites. I talked to some great people though. I, I hear it all the time after open houses. Like I talk to clients, so how was your open houses this weekend? Oh man, I talked to a ton of great people, man. A lot of good contacts. How many appointments did you generate? Uh, none, but oh, I got some people I got to follow up on. I know why. Because when you did the open house, you were thinking about making contacts. And as simple as that sounds, if you think about making contacts, you get contacts. Just like if you think around generating leads, right? How many people filled out my form? How many email leads did I get? If you're thinking about leads, you get a lot of leads. What do we all want? What's this show all about? appointments. I want you to get way more appointments because last time I checked, if you want more paychecks, more signed contracts, more joy and happiness, you got to get these first. So we know the problem. We're not focused on the cause, getting appointments. We're focusing on the effect. I want more listings. I want more sales. I need you to shift your mindset towards appointments, 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 appointments. That's the game. Now, the other thing I noticed, the problem is we don't have what I would call an appointment setting routine. So as we jump into the three part series, I wanna start by giving you an appointment setting routine, something that I use today, that I've watched tens of thousands of agents all over the world use, that my 70 salespeople use every single day to make sure that they are using their time wisely, focusing on what matters most, and producing the kind of results that they want. So let's take a look at the routine. The first thing is, you ask yourself this question, 
Why should someone, this customer, do business with me? So I'm about to make the phone call. Why should this customer do business with me? Now, what I love about that question is it calls into, you know, into your, your consciousness, what value are you gonna bring to the customer? See, if all you're thinking about is yourself, if all you're thinking about is, oh man, I really need a deal, or oh man, I really wanna get this lead, or oh, I wanna get this listing before anybody else, and oh, if I get this listing, it's gonna bring me this, 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 and I'm gonna go to the Bahamas, then you're only focusing on yourself. We don't win when we're focusing on ourselves. We win when we're focusing on the customer. This morning I was getting a, an IV of some vitamin C and stuff before a trip, and I was talking with uh, you know, my doctor, and he said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm out looking for houses. I said, how's that going? He said, it's been really frustrating. I said, tell me why. And he said, I just feel like, and, and by the way, I got a referral, which was great for one of our clients. He said, I just feel like every real estate agent I talk to is just trying to sell me a house. And I said, well, you're right because they're focusing on themselves. And when you focus on yourselves, you come across with commission breath. But if I really think to myself, why should this customer do business with me? Well, you know, I got a great track record. I'm gonna save them time. I got their back. I'm gonna have their best interest in mind. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get the job done and get it sold. Now I'm, I'm thinking about what am I gonna do for you? How am I gonna bring you value? And I'm taking it off me and putting it all on. How do I bring you more value? Well. Just by asking yourself that question and really authentically answering that question, you shift the focus from here to there. And do you think the customer feels that? Do you think the customer gets a sense, whether it's over the phone or face to face, if you, know, you need a deal versus, hey, I can talk you out of buying this house and now is not the right time for you. And by having that sort of swagger, how that makes you, you know, your eye, like the way the customer experiences you, you know what I'm talking about. So that's the first thing. The second question I wanna ask is, what am I committed to and why? So before I even get on the phone, what am I committed to? Well. I'm committed to helping clients. I'm committed to booking two appointments. I'm committed to furthering my career. I'm committed to finding two people today that I can bring value to, two people today that I can help live, you know, the real estate American dream, the Canadian dream, the Czechoslovakian dream, like whatever it is, but like that's what I'm committed to. And you center your mind and your focus on producing that result. And just like if you said, I really love that black Lexus, you begin to see it everywhere, right? We've all experienced this before. Like you just, everywhere you turn, there's a black Lexus, there's a gray Lexus, there's a dirty Lexus, and you say that's close enough to black and you, you declare that it is black. Like that's the way the mind works. But when you say, I'm committed to booking two appointments, I've watched people literally get on the phone and in three or four phone calls, achieve all the results they wanted right? Because your mind is no longer focused on you. You're focused on serve the customer and you're focused on what you want. Now, number three is I say, get into an appointment setting state. Um, if you've heard me talk about my son, Steven, who's a tennis player, um, as a speaker, right? Before I go on stage, uh, everyone I've ever met that does something at a high level has a, a pre-start routine. You know, so for my son playing tennis, he's like, I command my conscious and unconscious mind to give me the skills, the talent, the ability to be quick to the ball, to have great footwork, you know, to, to hit effectively, to close out the match, to serve aces. So he's affirming all the things he wants, but the key is that he's getting his body involved in it. So you might do something as simple as this before you get on the phone. Right now, I command my conscious and unconscious mind to allow me to help more customers right now book an appointment and solve their real estate challenges. I'm committed, I'm powerful, I am focused, I'm a lean, mean, appointment setting machine. And I know this may look bizarre to you, but I don't know, like when I see most people go, oh, this is most people's pre-appointment setting routine. Oh God, I gotta get on the phone and I'm nervous. Maybe I have to go to the bathroom. Uh, are those donuts over there? Maybe I should go get some food. Like, that distracted mindset, that unfocused mindset, that undisciplined mindset carries over into the calls. But when I'm thinking about serving the customer and I'm thinking about what I'm committed to and I'm, I get myself in like that Superman, Superwoman state, I am unstoppable and I'm gonna produce results. Does that make sense? Now, the second thing I wrote down is you gotta know your automatic shot and take that first. Um, several years ago, I was doing a conference and uh, the coach of the Detroit Pistons, uh, an amazing individual, and then he went on to be the coach of the Dream Team, uh, we were chatting about how he was able to take the Detroit Pistons and win, you know, win those championships. And he said, you know, I had all these talented people, talented people like you, and he said, what I did is I asked all the guys, where are you most comfortable 
on the floor. So like Dumars, if I get you the ball, like where are you most comfortable? Isaiah, when I get you the ball, where are you most comfortable? And then what he did is he designed all the plays to get guys the ball where they were the most comfortable and then he expected them to make the shot. Does that make sense? So if I asked you, who are you most comfortable calling to book an appointment? Or, and this is a, a scary sort of metaphorical example, um, but I've heard people say like, if you had a gun to your head, who would you call? If you absolutely had to get an appointment right now, like it was like do or die, who would you call? Now you might say, I'd call my past clients, right? I'd call my, you know, 55 Zillow leads I've got sitting inside my database. I would, you know, reach out to every person went to an open house. You would automatically say, I know where I'm most comfortable. And what I know is this, right? What I know is when you want to get into rhythm and start booking a lot of appointments, you want to start where you're really comfortable before you go to the quote unquote harder stuff, if that makes sense. So start with your database. For some clients, it might be, I'm going to start with expired listings because I know I'm, you know, I'm going to call 10, talk to three, another three, I'm going to book one appointment. It's like clockwork. It's like math. So you always want to start where you're most comfortable to make some successes, to get some wins, to get some rhythm. And that way, your appointment setting skyrockets. Number three, is with your language, you want to be more assumptive. Now, I know there's all those funny metaphors, you know, don't be too assumptive, it makes a you know what out of you and me. Um, but when it comes to sales and marketing, when it comes to, you know, helping customers, you know, I just find that, that if we assume the sale, if my language, if my physiology, if everything about me is, we're doing business together, we're gonna to have some fun, I'm gonna solve your problems, I'm gonna take you on, like, you know when you work with someone, that everything about their language, their mindset, their physiology, when it's super congruent, it's easier to say yes to that person than the person that's, that, well, imagine like you're on the phone with somebody. Imagine you're on the phone, you're, you're calling a doctor and you're like, look, I've got this problem, I'd like to come in. And they're like, well, I'm really not, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, maybe, I guess, if you can come down to the office, like maybe we can get together. Like if you were hearing all this, maybe, I'm not sure, this uncertainty, are you thinking, that's my brain surgeon, I want that gal. Like, she seems really uncertain. Please open up my head. Heck no. But it's no different from Dr. Dane saying to me today, you know, talking with a lot of these people, like it's just like all they want to do is close me, right? All they want to do is sell me a house. And they, it's like they feel like all they want is my money. And I said, Dane, there's a difference. See, if somebody has the right mindset, if somebody cares, if somebody really wants to serve, their language is still, they're going to say things like, when we get together. What does that imply? So, you know, I mean, when we get together, Taz, you know, we're going to find out and I'm going to show you and you're going to share with me and we're going to look at your house and we're going to see if and we're going to look at the numbers when we get together. That assumes we're getting together. We're booking an appointment on this call. When you list your home with me, that's a great one. You know, I can appreciate the fact that you're saying that when you list your home with me, you're going to discover that when you list your home with me, when you list your home with me, when you list your home with me, you know, the more you say that, the better you feel, the better you feel, the more you're going to say it. That's how it works. When you list your home with me, when we get together at our meeting, I'll be sharing when I sell you a home. The bottom line is this, to be effective in sales, we're going to talk about, you know, psychology and physiology and tonality in the next few episodes, but you got to get the 7% right. The 7% is the words that you use and the more assumptive you are with your language, the more the close becomes natural and automatic. You know, it's actually awkward at the end of a presentation if you don't close. It's actually awkward for the customer if you don't say, so should we get together, how about Monday or Tuesday at four? Like if you leave me hanging or you say, okay, well, I'll get back to you later. Like you and I both know, if you wanna book way more appointments, all you have to do is look at what the masses of salespeople do and do the opposite. The masses of salespeople in your office and around the world close one time, right? They're on the phone, right? They're following up with a lead. Someone that gave you a phone number in an email, like, hello, who in their right mind does that unless they want more information to figure out if you're the woman, if you're the guy for them. It's weird if you don't close. But most salespeople close one time and it goes something like this. <laughs> so what do you think? Like that's their big close. So what do you think? Which by the way, causes the customer to say, what do you think? What do you think? Well, I think I want to think it over. I think I'm uncomfortable. I think this doesn't, I don't have all the information I need. Why don't you send me more information? You actually plant the seed of doubt when you say things like, what do you think? 
Experts never talk about what do you think. They talk about what they know. It's a big distinction, my friends, and I know when we get together, I'm going to help you. I'm going to answer your questions. I'm going to make sure that you're in a position where you can make the most intelligent decision possible about selling your home or not selling it, buying a home or not buying it. That's what I know. Never say, what do you think? The second one is we know some salespeople will close up to three times. What would be better for you, Monday or Tuesday at four? Well, you know, I'm not sure I need to talk to my spouse. Great. I, you know, of course, I'm a married man. I absolutely understand. Why don't we pencil in Tuesday at four, talk with your spouse, and the worst case scenario is you call me back and say, hey, Tom, how about six? Does that work for you? Like most people would say, okay, don't go into your spouse and I'll get back to you later. No, go ahead and pencil me in, right? Like I, I, I'm constantly baffled by people that allow the call me back later, can you follow up me later, I need to check with. You know that that's just the real estate gods throwing down an objection through the consumer at you to see, are you worthy? Are you worthy of this transaction? And most people in that moment, okay, I'll call you back later. Instead of saying, hey, let's go ahead and pencil me in. And I, I, I've said this to you before, totally appreciate you need to talk to your spouse. You know, my hairdresser, right? I, I have to book him a month in advance to get in. I know it's shocking, but yes, a month in advance. So this time it's just like that time. Why don't we go ahead and pencil it in for Tuesday at four, and then you let me know if it's not Tuesday at four, maybe it's Tuesday at five, or maybe it's Wednesday at three. But no matter what, I wanna start carving out that time and preparing to serve you and your spouse. Does that make sense? So let's go ahead and book that now, shall we? Bam, that's three times I asked for it. And when you ask three times, guess what happens? You know that the average human being has a natural sales barrier wall, right? You know it because you, you're like, I need a new jacket, I'm going to this function. You walk in the store, you see the jacket, salesperson walks up and says, hi, can I help you? What do we all say? No, I'm just looking. No, no, you have the jacket, you're trying it on, you're going to a function. We are conditioned to say, no, I'm just looking. No, I don't, no, send me information. So you gotta move beyond the initial reflex no and close multiple times. The very best people, they close five times, six times, seven times. And the beautiful thing is, it doesn't even feel like they're closing. They're just helping the customer make a decision. They're identifying the boulders and the rocks and the dragons that are in the way, and they're getting the dragons out of the way, removing the rocks, going over the bridge, doing whatever it takes to serve the customer. So, what's the message of the day? The message of the day is you need a pre-appointment routine, right? You gotta know your automatic shot. You have to know who you're really good with and always start there. Number three, you gotta be more assumptive with your language when we get together, when you watch this video, when you share some comments, when you share this video with all your friends. You with me on this? Assumptive, assumptive. And then you gotta close. Don't be like the average real estate agent that closes one time. <laughs> so what do you think? Don't be that person, right? That person's just... They, they shouldn't be in the industry. That's how strongly I feel about it. So what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? This is number one. I'm gonna do two or three more shows just on this subject with one intent in mind, that between now and the end of the year, you get more courage, more swagger, more ability, more skill, more enthusiasm, more passion, more certainty around booking appointments. Because what I know is the more appointments you book, the more customers you serve, and the happier you are. Thanks so much for watching. Remember always your strategy matters and now more than ever, your passion rules. Thanks for watching. If you love what you're seeing here, then click the button below to join our online community absolutely free. Thanks so much. <laughs>